Hey everyone, welcome to another lesson here at THSS Technology. Today we're going to be continuing on our lesson about player animations. So let's get started. So when we left our game last off, uh, we, had, we put some player animations into our game, the left, right, up and down. I also added an idle animation while you're away. But uh, one of the big aspects here is when I move my player around, they're just still stuck in the idle animation and they're not switching between the four different directions. So that's going to be the focus of today's lesson. So let's get going. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my animator tab here. Now, if you don't see an animator tab, you can always go to window animation animator to add the tab. Uh, and I'm actually just going to dock this tab uh, next to my scene and game window here so I can have access to it. Let's just get rid of these because we're going to be adding these together. Uh, everybody. Excellent. So what the animator tab does is it contains all the animations that are on any given object. So I have my player here. And if I hit play here, what you'll notice is uh, you're going to see my player at idle animation just playing endlessly here. Our goal is to have this idle animation switch between our animations as we're moving in different directions. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Uh, we're going to do this today with something called a blend tree. Okay. Now you can move these animations around if, you, if it helps you to kind of visualize what's going to be happening now, but we're going to be changing how this is actually done. But this is kind of the, the goal of what we're trying to do here is be able to cycle between these animations as we're moving around in our game. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to create some parameters or variables that are going to control uh, how we move and cycle between our animations. So up here in the animator tab, I'm going to click on the parameters here and I'm going to add a new parameter. It's going to be a float. I want to be able to work with a number uh, that can deal with decimal places. So I'm going to add a float and I'm going to call this first float move X and that float is going to dictate when we move on the positive or the negative on the X axis. And I'm going to add a second float, which I'm going to call move Y. So those are the two uh, parameters that are going to control uh, when we transition between our animations. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create something called a blend tree. A blend tree allows us to move between animation types in a much more efficient way. So what I'm going to do down here in my uh, anim animator window, I'm going to right click, create state, and I'm going to create new blend tree. And what we're going to do from this blend tree is this is what's going to control all of these four animations here. So let's double click to open up the blend tree and let's get started. Okay. So we have our blend tree here and on our blend tree uh, over here on the inspector for the blend tree, we're going to specify what type of blend tree it is. It's going to be a 2D simple directional blend tree. And now let's add some parameters. Our first parameter will be move X. And the second parameter will be move Y. You might notice it's going to say this NAN here sometimes. It's an easily fixable error that you can just save Unity, close and reopen it, and it should be fixed, but it won't actually affect this lesson today. And now we can set our parameters for move X and move Y. So I'm going to add a motion field, and I'm actually going to add four motion fields because we have four different animations we are going to cycle between. The first animation we're going to do is the player walking and just select your four different animations that you're going to be doing here. Okay. What you see here is now we have player walk down, left, right, and up. And now we have to determine what is going to trigger between those animations. When I want my player walking down, which is the first animation here, that's when my Y position will be at negative one. Okay. When I want my player walking left, my X position will be at negative one. And we're just thinking like a, a graph here, like a number line. And then we want our player walking right. Our X position will be on one. And when we want our player walking up, our Y position will be on one. And what you can see now here is we have a, a four way graph here uh, that shows our four different locations of our animation. Excellent. So that's all set up now in our blend tree. And now we can go down to base layer and we have our blend tree here and just double click on it again to bring this up. But if we go back to base layer now, we want to create a uh, transition from our idle down to our blend tree. So we're going to do that by right clicking on the idle down. We're going to go make transition and connect it to our blend tree. And now when we click on this transition, I'll highlight in blue, we need to change a few settings here. First of all, we're going to take off has an exit time and then we are going to go to settings and we're going to put uh, the duration down to zero. So it's going to be an instantaneous transition between animations. You don't want the animations to blend together or anything like that in our type of game. 
And now we're gonna set our conditions. What is going to trigger this transition right now? So my trigger is gonna be based on my move x. If my move x is greater than 0 0.1, um, so that's we're gonna bind that to our velocity in a little bit. And then our move y, if that is greater than 0 0.1, okay? So if our move x goes higher than 0.1 in the x direction, or uh, the move y goes uh, higher than 0 0.1, uh, it's going to trigger this transition, which is gonna go into our blend tree, uh, which is then going to switch to our different animations. So that's kind of the state that we're at now. Now what we have to do is we have to have the ability to uh, influence our move X and our move Y floats inside of our code. So uh, I'm gonna open up our player controller code here and we're gonna add a few different uh, aspects to it. So uh, under here, under my header component section, uh, let's create a new variable. This is gonna be a public. It's gonna be an animator and I'm gonna call this my anim. I'm then going to connect that, um, that component with code, and you can see Visual Studio is just completing it for me, and we're gonna do my anim equals get component animator. Let's tab that in to complete that. And now we're gonna go down to our update, and we're gonna add the actual code, which is gonna grab the animator, grab that my anim, and bind it to our rigid body, which allows us to control the movement here, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do my anim again, we'll grab our anim, and we're gonna do something called set float. Set float is gonna grab that float parameter. If we remember, if we go back to here, it's gonna grab these parameters here, these float parameters, and that's how we're going to influence. So we're gonna do set float, and now we have to establish the float, and the first float we did was move x. Okay, so we're gonna take our move x float that we created, and we're gonna link that to our my RB, we're gonna grab our rigid body, dot velocity, I can spell, and then dot X, okay? So what this bit of code is doing right here, it's taking your animator component, and then it's grabbing the move X float that we've assigned to it in the animator, and we're gonna tie that float to your velocity on the X. So if your X goes to the to the right, it's gonna go to the positive. If it goes to the left, it's gonna to go to the negative. And then we're gonna do the exact same steps for our Y. We'll just take this and we'll actually just copy it down and we'll change this to Y here and we'll change this to Y here, okay? So what we've added to our code, we've added a new variable called my anim, which is gonna grab our animator. Then here in the start, we're going to grab the animator component and assign it to that variable that we created. And then here in the code, uh, we are going to grab the animator, we're gonna grab our two floats, our move X and move Y, and link those to our velocity on the X and Y axis. Let's control S, let's go back into Unity, it's gonna compile, and we'll leave the animator open here and kinda of see if it works. So right now, if I hit play in my game, you'll see my idle animation is playing. And now when I move into the left, I can move to the right, move down, I can move up, and it is switching between my four animations now. If we open up the blend tree, you can see over here in the blend tree as I'm walking around, it is moving up, down, left, right. So it's cycling between all my animations now perfectly. And it keeps going back to my player walk down animation. Uh, a good challenge for you all, can you figure out a way to get it from your player walk down when you're not moving and switch it back to your idle animation. So that's going to be your challenge for the week. All right. Thanks everybody for listening and we hope you had a great day. Bye-bye.